Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi everyone, we're glad to be back and here is Azinis for today. Indonesian Muslims celebrate it with mass prayers amid relaxed COVID-19 measures. Thousands of Indonesian Muslims in Jakarta gathered for mass prayers on Monday, May the 2nd, to celebrate Idul Fitr as the world's largest Muslim-majority nation relaxed COVID-19 restrictions in time to mark the end of the holy fasting month of Ramadan. My view as a health worker is that I feel grateful that many people are now vaccinated and it's heading towards being endemic. Although I know COVID-19 is not endemic now, I still urge people to keep adhering to the health protocols, wear your masks, and get your booster vaccination. Yang penting tetap prokes aja, pakai masker, terus sama vaksin booster deh. Tron footage showed large crowds of people standing shoulder to shoulder outside the newly constructed Jakarta International Stadium for morning prayers. The first mass eat gathering in two years in Indonesia since the coronavirus pandemic hit. Residents welcomed the relaxed measures, which also allowed tens of millions of Indonesian Muslims to travel back to their hometowns to mark the festival, but urged caution about infection risk from COVID-19. We feel grateful that God has given us a chance to live our lives as per normal. We were unable to gather and hold mass prayers in the past two years, but now we are able to gather and even use this new Jakarta International Stadium for our Eid prayer. Fasilitas Jakarta International Stadium untuk sholat Idul Fitri. For the past two years, the Southeast Asian nation of 270 million people has grappled with one of the highest rates of coronavirus infections in Asia. But in recent months, it has loosened many of its pandemic restrictions after a sharp drop in infections. File footage of Philippine presidential candidate Marcos Jr. ahead of May 9 election. <laughs> Philippine presidential candidate Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has retained a clear lead in survey ahead of the May 9 election, though his lead has narrowed after Vice President Lenny Robredo picked up support and an opinion poll showed in early April. Marcos Jr. served as provincial governor and congressman in his home province of Ilocos Norte until he was elected to the upper chambers as senator in 2010. In 2015, he announced his candidacy to run for vice presidency in the 2016 general elections. Marcos Jr. eventually lost the race and was placed second. On October 6, 2021, Marcos Jr. officially filed his candidacy for presidency ahead of the 2022 elections. Marcos has said he will be a unifying leader to help the Philippines tackle the twin crisis of public health emergency and an economic slowdown. In late November, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's daughter, Sara Duterte Carpio, confirmed that she will be running mate for Marcos Jr. The election to choose the successor to Duterte, who is bared by the constitution from seeking re-election, is on May 9. Bacon for Marcos, the son and namesake of the country's late dictator, dropped slightly to 56% compared to its 60% in the previous Pulse Asia surveys in January and February, while Robredo's support grew up to 24% from 15% the month before. Marcos' running mate, Sara Duterte Carpio, daughter of the incumbent President Rodrigo Duterte, remained the top choice for vice president with 56% support in the survey, while Senate President Vicente Soto was in second place with 20% support. As frontrunner, Marcos appears poised to complete a remarkable rebranding of the family name 36 years after a people power uprising ended his father's autocratic rule. In the Philippines, the president and vice president are elected separately. More than 67 million Filipinos, including 1.7 million living overseas, have registered to vote in the elections, which historically have a high turnout. Profile of Philippine presidential candidate Lenny Robredo ahead of May 9 election. Robredo, 
Philippine Vice President Lenny Robredo, a staunch critic of President Rodrigo Duterte's brutal war on drugs, is a candidate in the country's upcoming presidential election on May 9. Robredo, 56, was elected separately from Duterte and was not his running mate. Vice presidents are elected separately from president in the Philippines and Robredo has been at loggerheads with Duterte on a range of issues. The human rights lawyer and widow of a former interior minister said her decision was a difficult one but she wanted to be of greater service to a country facing unprecedented health and economic shocks and has promised to usher in a government that cares for the people, not personal interests. Robredo will face at least four other candidates who have made the presidential runs official, including the son and namesake of the late dictator, Ferdinand Marcos, whom she beat by a slim margin in 2016 vice presidential contest. Should she win, Robredo will be the third woman to lead the Philippines after democracy champion Corazon Aquino in 1986 and Gloria Machapagal Arroyo in 2001. The mother of three, the narrowly beat Marcos Jr., the son and namesake of the late Philippine dictator Ferdinand Marcos, in the 2016 vice presidential contest, is behind the former senator in opinion service. Profile Philippines boxing legend Manny Pacquiao running for May 9 presidential race. Boxing legend Manny Pacquiao have signed up for his toughest fight yet in running for president of the Philippines, facing doubt about his leadership and commitment as a lawmaker that could dent his appeal and deal a big blow to his ambitions. The 43-year-old announced his candidacy in September last year, declaring his readiness to rise the challenge of leadership and battle poverty and corruption. As an innate division world champion, Pacquiao is a national treasure, but analysts say he faces a huge challenge to convince the electorate he can lead a nation beset by problems ranging from crime, craft and natural disasters to Islamist extremism, outdated infrastructure and bloated bureaucracy. Pacquiao is no political neophyte, having served as both congressman and senator, winning elections with ease due to his mass appeal as one of the world boxing's all-time greats and his rags to riches life story. His commitment to public service has also been questioned with a poor attendance in Congress and lengthy disappearances as senator while training for big money fights abroad. With the constitution only allow a single term as a president, Pacquiao will not have to take on popular incumbent Rodrigo Duterte, but he could face a formidable opponent in his daughter, Sara Duterte Carpio, who looks to have inherited her father's cult-like following. Despite repeatedly saying she will not run, Duterte Carpio, 43, has topped every opinion polls this year on preferred candidates. As senator, Pacquiao allied himself with Duterte, making his bloody war on drugs and pushed to reintroduce the death penalty, but has sought to distance himself lately, complaining of government graft and criticizing Duterte's inaction against perceived Chinese aggression in the South China Sea. Shrugging of his low rating in opinion polls, Pacquiao says his impoverished route make him the best person to be president as he warned voters to avoid corruption-tainted candidates. Pacquiao questioned why people supported Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the current frontrunner for the May 9 vote, pointing to the plundering of the country's wealth during the harsh authoritarian rule of his late father and namesake. Pacquiao is trailing in fourth place on 6% of the latest opinion poll held in early April, well behind Marcos who is leading with 56%. Indonesia is hopeful of palm oil export ban despite economists' warnings of a backlash. Food cart and stall owners in Jakarta on Thursday welcomed the start of a ban on palm oil exports by the president, saying they hoped this would help bring down the price of cooking oil which has spiked in the past year. Sandri, a street food vendor who like many Indonesian goes only by one name, said he was hopeful of a drop in cooking oil prices, adding that the higher than usual cost had made running his business difficult. Yeah. Yuli, the owner of a fried rice store who also goes by one name only, said she hoped prices will remain stable. Yeah. I hope that there won't be any rise in oil prices. Mr. Jokowi, I hope the prices stay stable. Please understand the poor people here. They can't manage if prices go up again. Bisa 
But despite the cheers, economists warned the ban was less about making palm oil affordable for households, but more of a political calculation that could potentially backfire of the country's economy. The Indonesian president's drastic measures to control food prices by banning palm oil exports have helped lift his sagging approval ratings, an independent pulling firm said on Thursday. Chief Economics Minister Erlangga Hartarto said the ban would be lifted when the price of bulk co cooking oil had come down to 14,000 rupiah or 97 cent dollar liter across Indonesia. Bulk cooking oil was still being offered at 19,000 to 20,000 rupiah a liter in Jakarta's traditional markets on Thursday. Indonesia is the world's top producer, exporter and consumer of palm oil, accounting for around 60% of total supply. Indonesia's Muslims return home for Eid al-Fitr after two years' travel ban. Hundreds of thousands of Muslims in Indonesia were seen leaving capital Jakarta on Thursday to return to their hometown a few days ahead of the holiday season of Eid al-Fitr in early May. Drone footage showed thousands of cars queuing at a toll booth, while crowds were also seen at train and bus stations on Monday, April 25. Tri Waihuni, a 24-year-old passenger returning to Sumatran province of Lampung, was looking forward to seeing her family after the world's largest Muslim-majority nation loosened pandemic restrictions and lifted a two-year ban on the mass exodus tradition known locally as Mudik. Indonesia's daily case numbers have decreased significantly since the spike in February driven by the Omicron variant. About 60% of its 270 million people have been vaccinated against COVID-19. Indonesia president says Ukraine invite to G20 summit. Indonesia's president Joko Widodo said on Friday that he had invited Ukraine's president Volodymyr Zelensky to attend the summit of group of 20 major economies held in the Southeast Asian country in November. G20 memiliki peran sebagai katalisator dalam pemulihan G20 can be a catalyst for world economic recovery, and if we talk about world economic recovery, there are two influential things, COVID-19 pandemic and war in Ukraine. In this context, on our phone call, I invited President Volodymyr Zelensky to attend G20 summit. President Zelensky untuk hadir dalam KTT G20. Zelensky had previously tweeted that he would come to the summit earlier this week. As Russia's favorite invasion in Ukraine, which it calls a special operation, has loomed large over G20 proceedings. The Indonesian president, commonly known as Jokowi, said he spoke on the phone with Zelensky on Wednesday, April 27, where he said he turned down Ukraine's request for an unarmed supply due to the Indonesian constitution and its foreign policy principles. Dibahas juga mengenai berbagai permintaan bantuan we also discussed about possible arms assistance to Ukraine from Indonesia. I emphasize that in accordance to the Constitution of Indonesia and principle of foreign policy of Indonesia, it is forbid to give weapon aids, but I told him Indonesia is ready to provide humanitarian assistance. Namun, saya menyampaikan kesiapan Indonesia untuk memberikan bantuan kemanusiaan. Ukraine is not a member of the G20, but chairs of the grouping have previously invited guest countries. Ukraine's finance minister attended a meeting of G20 finance officials in Washington last week. Well, that's the end for today, and thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a lovely weekend.